Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name's Rohan. I'm a second year medical student studying at the University of Cambridge. In this video, I'll be sharing some tips specific for A-level biology and also what the main topics to revise are. My general thoughts on A-level biology is that it's probably one of the more awkward exams to prepare for of the sciences. This is because I'm sure you're aware there's a lot of content, yet the exam itself tends to focus more on application and data analysis. This makes it uniquely challenging, which I think is reflected in the slightly lower grade boundaries for biology. That being said, biology was definitely one of my most rewarding A-levels, and it definitely drove me to study medicine. This is because you get to study actual organisms and really cutting edge stuff about what's relevant in society as a whole. Whereas sometimes in the other sciences, I found it quite abstract thinking about really molecular and sub-molecular stuff. So to get into the meat of the video, I first want to provide an overview of the topics in A-level biology. This is because it's really easy to get lost in the enormity of the course. So I just thought I'd try condense it into a handful of topics to make it more manageable and hopefully easier to see how subtopics link to each other. It should also help when you're applying synoptic essays, which we'll touch upon later. So this isn't a formal or exhaustive list, but some of the key topics for me in A-level biology are biological molecules. So this includes stuff like carbohydrates, lipids, enzymes, protein synthesis, DNA replication. Then you have stuff which I call cell biology. Organelles, difference between prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells, mitosis, meiosis, difference between animal and plant cells. Then you have things linking with ecosystems like taxonomy, evolution, biodiversity, species adaptations, and carbon and nitrogen cycles. Then you have cell transport mechanisms like diffusion, osmosis, active transport, a little bit on target pressure. Plant physiology, to be honest, I can't remember much of this, like xylem and phloem and maybe a bit of plant auxins. Human physiology, which is quite broad. You have circulation, the respiratory systems, the kidneys, nervous system and transmission, vision, homeostasis and the endocrine system, respiration and photosynthesis, so this includes like the chemiosmotic theory of electron transport chains, the light dependent and light independent reactions in photosynthesis, glycolysis, Krebs cycle, yeast producing ethanol. Next we have microbiology and immunology, which includes different types of cultures, bacterial growth curves, antibiotics, and of course the immune system. And finally genetics, so this includes more classical stuff like Mendelian genetics, Punnett squares, pedigree diagrams, but also it was quite enjoyable to learn about more modern techniques like PCR and gene sequencing, recombinant DNA technology, stem cell biology, MI and siRNAs. Okay, now changing track, I'm going to share some tips which I found useful when studying for A-level biology. Firstly, it's really important that we don't neglect topics that we don't particularly like. So I know not many students like the ecology or plant side of biology. This is because they form a large part of the course. And even if you look at the exam questions, it's a lot easier for the examiners to set the harder application type questions with data analysis compared to topics like human physiology, which tend to have more of the factual recall questions. So basically, it's really important that we have a decent understanding of even our weaker topics, because often it's the questions on these which distinguishes the A from the A-star candidates. Another useful tip for me when preparing was to try blitz through the content and focus more on past papers. It's so easy to get bogged down with the theory and neglect past papers until the very end. But as explained in my previous video, this is just counterproductive. One way you can speed up the process of going through the content is try working through the textbook questions, which tend to test you on more factual recall stuff. Another strategy which I found helpful, but quite controversial, is highlighting the textbook. <gasps> so yes, I know the evidence clearly states that this is an ineffective study technique in itself, but hear me out. So in my school, because we were in the last year of the school doing the edXL course, they let us keep our textbooks. This is actually a game changer because in lessons, I could just highlight the most important facts, which sometimes is only one or two sentences in a huge paragraph. Then in lessons, I could focus more on what the teacher was actually saying and trying to actually understand the content at the first instance, rather than frantically trying to copy down from the board and reviewing my notes later that evening. I sometimes even drew little diagrams at the side of the textbook to summarize large swathes of text into really simple things to learn. It also helped me with active recall because I was able to make questions on my highlights and then I'd go answer these questions and it'd be really easy to quickly check for answers instead of wasting your time trying to find what the relevant bit to answer your question was. And in fact, this is the exact technique which I used in the first year of medical school exams to get me pretty good grades. So I know that it works. 
The next few tips are about exam technique, which is the key to success in A-level biology. Firstly, know your command words. These are the words which tell you what to do in a question and they inform you what your answer should be about. I remember, we literally spent a whole lesson just defining these because they are so important. So here are some command words from the Edexcel biology specification and you can see it's easy to start losing marks if we weren't on top of these. For example, notice how compare and contrast requires similarities as well as differences. If you fail to include similarities, you'd only get half marks. In words such as evaluate, you need to consider the strengths and weaknesses and then come to conclusion. So one word requires many actions to get all the marks. For paper three, so this is the paper focused on the practicals, it's obviously important to know how the setup for each practical works. For example, the colorimeter and absorbance calibration curves seems to come up a lot in questions. However, it's even more important to know why you do certain things. For example, why is a blank reading on a colorimeter curve necessary? Why do you need a calibration curve in the first place? And why do you set up the transpirometer experiments underwater? Data handling questions also require certain techniques such as stats and you also need to get to grips with specific terms like accuracy, reliability, precision and just general experimental design. There's too much really to cover in this video, but this is where analyzing mark themes become super helpful. Finally, a quick note on essays. Unfortunately, I didn't do AQA biology, so this isn't my area of expertise. However, I think it's less daunting if we approach it from a standpoint about writing five paragraphs where we can just show off our knowledge of the biology course. The key thing is to make sure everything that you say is something which you've learned within the last two years i.e. everything is at A level standard and it's not slipping down towards GCSE standard. Make sure you have sufficient breadth and depth. So I think they recommend four or five examples from across the course. And make sure that you keep linking back to the question and saying why this process is important. For the top marks, you need to include a couple of little things outside the syllabus. You can do this by reading like the extra boxes in the textbook, but also reading journals such as Biological Sciences Review. This is a journal written specifically for A-level students to challenge them a bit further from their A-level content. It's also from this journal which I found the spark which led to my EPQ project which you can watch over on YouTube. Finally, I'll link to in the description a fantastic video which I found which provides a lot more comprehensive breakdown on what's expected in a synoptic essay. So that's it for this video. Do let me know if you found this style of video useful. If you enjoyed it, please give this video a like and consider subscribing to the channel for more content like this in the future. If you are considering to applying to medical school, you might want to check out this video series, which I've been working on over the last year or so, where I give detailed tips for each stage of the application process. I'm sure you'll find it useful. Anyway, take care and bye for now.